We're now in year five. I'm going to tell you about this little journey. Um, up closer to my face. Okay, so uh, this is about the Perry Initiative. Our motto is building the pipeline for women in engineering and in medicine. Uh, and I'm the co-founder and executive director. So you guys know me from the testing realm. Um, I've spent many, many years, uh, many, many years, six years. I, I can't say many, many with um, Dawn and Dr. Pat around. So uh, spent some time in the lab, cadaver lab, running tests. Um, everything, you know, started out in spine uh, with my grad work and postdoc um, and moved into uh, sports medicine, some trauma, okay, some one-off products in, in various areas. But um, love that work. Uh, very uh, exciting, very dynamic. I don't need to tell this group that, um, that you get to be extremely creative as an engineer working in this space. And you get to meet orthopedic surgeons who are a lot of fun and uh, just a total adventure. So I was thinking um, a number of years ago about my colleagues, and, and this is no insult to the, to the gentleman in the room, but you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna categorize, okay, there's stereotypes for a reason, right? We, we do see a lot of this, right? Okay, and, uh, and I, I started thinking, why, why is this happening? Okay, why, why am I, a lot of times, when I'm not standing next to Dawn, uh, why am I the only female in the room? Um, and, 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 you know, am I missing something? Are there more people maybe behind me? Um, and the answer to that, unfortunately, is no. So this got me looking at some of the research out there about women in engineering, women in orthopedic surgery. What does that pipeline look at look like? So this is, um, this is information on uh, the orthopedic surgery pipeline. So undergrad, we have plenty of budding young surgeons who are female. 60% uh, of people majoring in biosciences are female. So plenty of diversity there, gender diversity there. Medical school, 48% fluctuates between 48 and 51%. Okay, that's been the past five, six years. Great numbers again, potential orthopedic surgeons. Your drop off happens right between medical school and residency, ortho residency, where you go from 48% potential orthopedic surgeons to 13% potential orthopedic surgeons. Okay, so that, that is definitely where the leak in the pipeline is. And it, you know, it's stable from here on out. So, you know, uh, long term, what you see here walking around AAOS is 4% female orthopedic surgeons, board certified, right? But you do have 13% feeding in to that larger lake. It's going to take a while for 13% of the input to up what you see in the general population there. Okay, but this is the pipeline for orthopedic surgery. For mechanical engineering, which is my own discipline, this is the pipeline. And it's similarly depressing. Uh, but the, the leak in the pipeline is definitely at a different point. So um, we have about 50-50 budding young engineers in high school. If you look at who is what we call STEM inclined, science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. You hear a lot about that. Who is STEM inclined? 48% um, of the people who are taking and passing the AP calculus exam, okay, so they would make fine young engineers, are female, all right? However, only 11% actually go into mechanical engineering. Tragedy, I know. Okay, tragedy, all right? And then it holds, it holds pretty consistent from there. So once we get them in to the engineering major, we know that we can track them, graduate school, faculty ranks, all of that, okay? So pretty stable from there on out. But that leak definitely happens. You've got a lot of kids, a lot of women, young women, who are STEM inclined, interested, and, and capable of going into engineering disciplines who don't make that choice. Okay, so what are we gonna do about it? Well, actually, no. Um, so I, I wanna look for a second at whether or not other disciplines face similar problems. And I want to call everybody's attention to a critical threshold. This is a, um, a percentage that's been established in the literature as a threshold to actually change culture in a, um, in a, in a group of people. So if you want to change the culture um, and you're a minority group, you need to get it to around 30%. 30% uh, is, is the critical threshold. So we are targeting moving this line. Orthopedics, again, you're at, at about 13% in training, okay? Far from the 30%, and then mechanical engineering, there we are at 11%. So just, just some, uh, some reference points here. And you can see that both orthopedics, when we're looking at this compared to other surgical subspecialties, it's towards the bottom, right? And the same with uh, mechanical engineering. We trade off with computer and electrical for the least diverse engineering uh, uh, group and and that's important because you, mechanical engineers feed into what you're seeing here at 
double AOS, along with biomedical, but uh, definitely mechanicals. Okay, uh, trends. So it's important to look at where we've been, right? Um, and where we're, to, to see where we're going here. So the trend in um, orthopedic surgery is ticking up a little bit. Okay, so we're, we're heading up, which is positive. Again, there's that 30% threshold. So by my curve fitting, we would reach uh, that threshold by about 2023, Bali for us. Uh, mechanical engineering is uh, plateaued, if not on the downslope a little bit. So we need to work on this, okay? So that's approximately never considering the, the trend that we're running here. Okay, so, so here I was thinking, I, I now understand uh, a little bit more about why I might be the only woman in the room at a given time. What am I gonna do about it? Well, it was 2008, so 2004 to 2008, which was when I realized this, this was about the solution to it. And uh, there came a point when I decided enough whining about this, let me actually try, and, and Dawn probably remembers this point, let me try to actually do something. So I decided to get excited and make things, that's my, my personal motto. And I had a, a co-founder in this, uh, Dr. Lisa Latanza, my buddy. So the two of us got together, I'm of course the brains, and she, the surgeon, would be the brawn, informing what we have today, which is the Perry Initiative. So let me tell you about our big idea. Our big idea was that um, to inspire women to pursue careers in underrepresented areas of engineering and medicine. Again, we're gonna use orthopedics as sort of an example of that. Um, and our programs, we decided we're going to run a program. And we're going to, what's going to differentiate this from every other out of school time program is the fact this is going to be extremely hands on, right? Pushing the envelope in terms of how it hands on this is. We're going to include some very high level mentoring. So it's not enough just to send our students and our residents, med students, in to talk to these high schoolers. We're going to go ourselves. And then we're also gonna directly confront some of the stereotypes that we're seeing in these fields. The idea that this is kind of the frat jock culture, right? And that you have to be a total math and science nerd to be an engineer. Okay, and, and, and in this, we had a, a great role model who was living at the time, Dr. Jacqueline Perry. She passed away a little over a year ago. She um, fortunately was able to see the program that was uh, named in her honor. And um, we felt very, very, um, encouraged when Dr. Perry said to us, for those of you who ever knew her, um, she's a kind of a, a, st a stern woman. She said, um, this is the best idea I never had. So, uh, so we, we definitely got Dr. Perry's endorsement when she saw our programs in LA. Okay, so then came the question, we want to run this outreach program, where are we going to start? Well, again, taking a look at the evidence, which is that there's this big drop off from high school uh, into college and choosing these majors, we decided that would be our first stop. Okay, we're hoping that's going to carry through a little explosive dose of the Perry Initiative here would carry through in both pathways. So we're going to expose these kids, high schoolers, juniors and seniors, women who are already interested in STEM but maybe don't know what they want to do. Let's see if we can encourage them to take a surgical pathway or to take an engineering pathway or even to take both. Be an engineer then be a surgeon. Okay, so what is it? This is not your average day. Perry Outreach Program are typically held on Saturdays. We're actually holding one today uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. Uh, over in the Hilton on Riverside, so you're welcome to come there. It's four hours of lab and two hours of lecture. Okay, more lab than lecture for six days total. Um, this is a typical schedule, so we hear from a, a surgeon in the morning and then we go straight into workshop. So these kids are doing external fixators, they are doing forearm casting, they're putting in spine screws, amazing stuff. Lunch, they hear from the engineers, and then we go back into the lab for more surgery. Let me show you the video of actually what this looks like. So here's some footage. These are 15 year old girls, 15, 16 year old girls, um, who have never held a power drill before. Uh, if you've ever tried to supervise something like that, it requires nerves of steel. Um, but we, we have a very good safety record uh, where we, we actually train these kids um, early in the day. And then by the end of the day, like this, they are just totally going to town. So a lot of work with Sawbones. Sawbones is one of our major sponsors. We're very grateful to them. And you can see these kids here, they're working directly with a resident. Very good one-on-one uh, -on -one type coaching. Okay, so these kids are working in small groups. They do six surgeries within the course of a day. And here we are uh, taking off a cast. So they also do things like casting, scope simulation, suturing, all kinds of stuff. All right. So 
Our first year was in 2009. Uh, this was a group of students that we invited into my lab, my biomechanics lab at the time, which was at UCSF. 15 kids, one program. Uh, we were fortunate that after this program, um, Chevron Energy Solutions uh, decided that we had a very good idea and invested in us. And them, along with many of the orthopedics companies that are here on the floor today, have allowed us to grow from 2010, four programs, 125 students. 2011, nine programs, 325. 2012, 24 programs, 875 students. Last year, we broke the Perry record, 31 programs, 1,200 students even. Okay, these are high school, juniors, and seniors who have done this one-day exposure program. Um, so phenomenal. These are our program locations all across the country and we keep adding more and more every day. So we've got good geographic coverage. We're focusing right now on two areas. We need some more programs in the south between DC and Florida. So if you know of anybody who's interested, we want to go to Atlanta. Uh, and then uh, also um, the western states. So Dawn, we're coming out to see you again for sure. All right. So uh, this is all nice, but unless we have some data, being an engineer, unless we have some data to back this up, right, this was all, all for naught. So fortunately, we have some data. So we've been collecting uh, information on these students um, since 2009, both pre and post surveys, and they consent to uh, follow up every year. And here is our first cohort that, that we've studied, and we're actually publishing this data now. This is a cohort of uh, approximately 1,200 students, averaged uh, 11th grade. Um, our minorities percentage, and this holds steady, so this is um, uh, non-Asian, so this is predominantly black and Hispanic, 41%. Uh, um, we have very high minority percentage, uh, thanks uh, in part to um, our recruiting partners, who I'll talk about in a minute. 50% of these kids approximately are already STEM inclined. Um, so these are kids who are already thinking about career in science, technology, engineering, and math. Short-term impact is, is great, right? So, you know, you got these kids, you survey them pre-post program, they're all coming back saying positive things. It increased my interest in medicine as career, confidence in hands-on task, interest, interest in engineering, all boosted. You see that with almost any outreach style program, right? But you do not see this with almost every outreach program. Okay, this is long-term impact. We followed these kids into college. 84% of them who have gone on to college, okay, which is the vast majority of them. We have some that are still in high school because we start in high school. 84% are in STEM majors, science, technology, engineering, and math. If we break that down further, 24% are in engineering, 53% are in some sort of pre-med. So that's biosciences, anything that would, would satisfy those pre-med requirements. Okay, so these numbers are tremendous. These are five times, that engineering number, five times national average for kids who are interested in STEM already in high school. Okay, so we are seeing a definite impact. This is a one-day program. We can't complain, we can't claim all the credit, right? Because mom and dad are definitely doing their jobs too. But we hear impact like this. This is when we're asking the kids one to three years out, what is the impact of this program? 92% said that one-day exposure program definitely increased their interest in STEM. 85% said it increased their interest in engineering directly. And we get quotes like this all the time. I didn't re realize the field of biomedical engineering would be so interesting. I thought it would consist of being stuck in a room analyzing problems, but it involves hands-on activities. Okay, so, so we're definitely confronting some stereotypes about our own field. I'm a shy person, teamwork is not my forte, but after the program I felt 10 feet tall and I've learned a lot and I'm not afraid anymore. Again, confidence building, right? Okay, so um, do I have another five? Sure. All right, or two, I'll bust through it in two. All right, another big idea. Okay, so just uh, one big idea is not enough. Here was our second big idea. We realized that as we were running these high school programs, we would invite in medical students from the community to volunteer at the programs. We realized that the training we were giving the volunteers the night before our program was actually helping the med students decide to go into orthopedics because they weren't getting any exposure. It was also teaching them how to use a drill, which is very scary because you ask the kids, have you been in surgery? Yes. Have you used a drill before? No. Like, oh my God. Okay, so, uh, so we decided that uh, um, med school needed a little dose of Perry too, okay? So we targeted a second point on the pipeline. Um, and this is specific to MS1, first in, MS1 and MS2, first and second year medical students, trying to get them to prepare themselves for orthopedic 
residency, right? To apply to residency. So uh, we started with four sites. We're in our second year now. We've bumped up to eight. These are all of our sites, very concentrated uh, up, up there in the uh, Northeast, but we're working on that, have some great partners. And here are our, uh, here's the, the curriculum. It's a shorter program, about three hours long. Um, it's focused specifically on orthopedics. We don't include the engineering component. Uh, and they do two cases. They do an X-Fix and an IM nail. Again, stressing uh, hand tool and power tool techniques. Um, we also use this program to directly combat some stereotypes that people have about orthopedic surgery, particularly the med students. From a mentor. So, so there you go. There's um, something that we heard again and again that we were trying to address, which is, do you have to be a big, strong jock, right? So women who are actually in the field addressing this issue. Okay, our results here are also good. We find that we're definitely changing some, some minds about what, which uh, uh, specialty to go into, and we're particularly changing opinions amongst medical students uh, in terms of lifestyle and physical demands of the orthopedic subspecialty. We've got some great strategic partners in all of this. What's coming up next for us, you can expect to see some per peri initiative curriculum in a classroom near you. Um, we've got uh, a partnership going with Sawbones where we're trying to bring this, uh, this material directly into the classroom. And I want to just thank my whole Perry Initiative crew who makes this happen, um, all of our sponsors, and uh, Dawn, thank you for, for letting me talk. All right.